Is the Roman Empire about to be overthrown? Who will survive when this Jewish Messiah comes? Certainly not you Romans. You will be destroyed. He will come and tread down the wicked nations. Can the Jews count on a Messiah miracle? If you go out on the Sabbath with a needle in your clothes, do you really risk your eternal salvation? Laws and leaders, have the Jews gone too far? From Roman News Network, with anchors Cornelia Magna and Marcus Tullia Scipio, this is Sundial. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Sundial. Jews can be found in almost all areas of the Roman Empire. They originated in the area of Palestine. Tonight, our stories focus on that small part of the empire. Our first report deals with a superstition rampant among the Jews that a messiah will deliver them from any oppression they face. Here with us tonight is Primus Vespio, who has just returned from Jerusalem with our report on the Messiah miracle. Primus? The Jews say their prophets have foretold the coming of a messiah or deliverer who will conquer their enemies. They view Rome as their natural enemy. I asked Sherebiah, a Jew, what this means. Many of the prophets have predicted the triumph of the Messiah. Malachi prophesied, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Well, that's an interesting question. Who do you say will survive when this Messiah comes? Certainly not you Romans. You will be destroyed. He will come and tread down the wicked nations. We have been oppressed for years, but that will soon change. Who is this Messiah you believe will come? The Messiah will be a great military leader. How else could he break the yoke of oppression from this people's neck? He will establish freedom once and for all for the Jewish people. Freedom. This is one issue that riles up the Jews and brings to the forefront the strong feelings concerning their Messiah. For most of the past 600 years, the Jews have been a conquered people. Their nation has been occupied by the Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and now the Romans. This history of being conquered has fanned the flames of the belief in the Messiah. Some Jews are not content to wait for someone to deliver them. A group of Jews called Zealots are already involved in trying to free themselves from foreign rule by fighting. We talked with one Zealot, but promised to keep his identity hidden. Do you believe a Messiah will come and deliver the Jews? Of course. It has been prophesied by the prophets. Then why do you zealots take the law into your own hands and fight against the Roman Empire? It is our duty to cooperate with God's purpose, to liberate Israel from foreign powers. Too many of our people sit back and wait. But you take your beliefs to the point of murder and insurrection. Isn't this a little too far? Nothing is too far for the purpose of God. Captain, how would you evaluate the threat of this great military leader to the Empire? I've been in battle. I've fought in Gallia and Germania. I've seen foreign armies. There's no Jewish army here. Even if they armed every man, woman, and child, we could mop this place up in a few weeks. The Roman soldiers here don't take this Jewish Messiah seriously. The Jews don't all agree on who this Messiah will be. I talked with Shalom, a devout man, near the temple in Jerusalem about the prophecies concerning the Messiah. Isaiah wrote, He is despised and rejected of men, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we are healed. Now wait, I thought he was supposed to be a great military leader who will break off the yoke of oppression. He will take the yoke from the people. The yoke of sin. But what about military triumphs? He will come more than once to the earth, you know. The first time he will come as a lamb, but when he comes the second time, he will be as a lion. Jews who view the Messiah as a suffering servant are definitely in the minority. Most Jews view the Messiah as a conquering hero. You've talked to many Jews all over the empire. Have they all heard this story about the Messiah? Yes. 
We found very few that have not heard the story. But there is so much disagreement over when he will come and what he will be like. Some of the Jews have gone into the wilderness to wait for his coming, and others say the time is not right. Many wonder if there really is a Messiah because they've been oppressed for so long and he has not delivered them yet. Thank you, Primus. And when we come back, could putting an egg by the fire be against the law? Jewish laws and leaders, are they unreasonable? Have you ever wanted to know more about the Africans, the Samaritans and the Jews, the Gauls and other nations the Romans have conquered? Many intelligent Roman citizens want more information about our empire. Well now, Lifetime Books is offering this beautiful, informative eight-volume set entitled Peoples of the Empire. Volume one will increase your understanding of the Samaritans and the Jews. Do you know why the Samaritans and the Jews, though they are related, hate each other? Do you know why believing Jews will travel this route instead of this one, adding miles to their journey just to avoid walking on Samaritan soil? Do you know why both Samaritans and Jews accuse each other of having a corrupt religion? Find out the answers to these and hundreds of other questions in the eight-volume set, Peoples of the Empire. Each scroll has been copied by one of our fine scribes. Every book is packed with valuable information, and you can purchase the entire set for less than 45 denarii per book. Just call your order in. And if you order today, you will also receive free this set of engraved scroll sticks and leather covers for each volume. Call now for your risk-free offer. The number is 555-3462. That number again, 555-3462. Do it now. I'm calling now. Welcome back to Sundial. Every society establishes laws to live by, but have the Jewish leaders gone too far with their laws? Servius Otho looks at the laws and leaders of the Jews. For some Jews, the placing of eggs next to a source of heat on the Sabbath is considered breaking the law. The reason? The egg could get a little cooked, and it is unlawful to cook on their sacred day. It is unlawful for a tailor to go out on the Sabbath with a needle in his clothes. The reason? A tailor uses a needle for work. It is not lawful to carry tools on the Sabbath. Sound ridiculous? We thought so too. So we talked with Malachi Bar Pashur, a respected Pharisee in Jerusalem, about their laws. Just placing an egg by a fire, a needle in a tunic, could these small acts really be a violation of the law? Oh, yes, they are. God has given his law, and we must keep it. But why are you so overly concerned about the little things? How can you even enjoy life? Enjoying life is not even the issue here. Not sinning before God is the issue. Salvation depends upon keeping the law. If a person doesn't live the law perfectly, he is accursed. We can't be clean in his sight unless we remain clean by not sinning. Are the examples we showed written in your scriptures as laws of God? Well, many things are written in our scriptures, but the examples you mention are part of the oral law or traditions of the elders. I've heard you sometimes miss the intent of the law of Moses by using the oral law for loopholes. You heard wrong. Well, don't you have a loophole that says you don't have to support your aging parents with your money? which is in direct violation of one of your Ten Commandments. If the money is set aside for God, it can't be used for other purposes. What do you know about our law? The basis for the Jewish law is the law given by Moses. This oral law, or the traditions of the elders, as it is sometimes called, has been added and seems to go further than the original written law. This oral law is almost like building a fence around the law of Moses so that there's no chance of breaking it. But there is a group of Jewish leaders that don't agree with the Pharisees about this oral law. They are the Sadducees. As you see, we are bound only by the written law of Moses. The oral law is not binding on us. Anything not in the written law of Moses <laughs> does not concern us. The Pharisees say that Jews should not mix with Romans. 
Some of the criticism I've heard of you Sadducees has to do with your wealth and political connections with the Romans. I am tired of the barbs from the Pharisees. They are just jealous because we wield the political power. We are the only ones capable of smoothing out relations with the government. I was surprised to find out how much the Pharisees and Sadducees disagree. They even disagree on basic doctrines such as resurrection and spirits. Another group of influential Jewish leaders, the scribes, are looked to as authorities on the law. Most scribes are Pharisees, but there are some Sadducean scribes. These scribes develop the law and apply specific rules to the modern circumstances. Written law, oral law, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. It's not easy to be a Jew these days. There are some complex issues to try to grasp about this strange religion within our empire. This is Servius Otho for Sundial. Thank you, Servius. That was a fascinating story. Were you aware of the internal strife among the Jewish leaders, Marcus? No, but I think I could live with some strife among the leaders easier than having to live by some of those rules. I wonder how they do it all the time. Speaking of time, it's almost disappeared from today's Sundial. But we have an enlightened program next week. We'll look at travel within the empire. Our Navy has opened the sea lanes. Piracy over the last hundred years has been cut by 90%. The Mediterranean is now safe for travel and shipping. We can't make a living doing highway robbery anymore. I mean, the Romans have built too good of a road system. They have too many patrols. And there's entirely too many places of protection. I mean, I'm looking for other work. We'll also visit with government officials about new building projects for the future. That's next time here on Sundial. Join us then. For now, good night. Good night. <laughs>